Welcome back to the Marine Corps Memorial here across the Potomac from Washington, D.C. It is, of course, few more moments in history that are more proud American moments than what that immortalizes behind us. Let's bring in Brianne Robertson, Marine Corps historian, for a little bit of insight on this. It's interesting, Brianne, and we appreciate you being here, that all around Washington there are memorials to people, there are memorials to events, the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial. This may be one of the few memorials that actually depict a moment in time. And we all know what happened on Mount Suribachi, but the, there's some controversy behind it, right? Uh, that's right, or there, there was recently controversy behind it. Um, last year, the Marine Corps uh, undertook a, an official investigation to, um, to consider the, um, the identification of the individ individuals depicted in the memorial. So, so we, there was Flags of Our Father, which was the iconic book written about the men who raised the flag on Suribachi, and then there were sort of two moments, right, because the flag was raised on one day and then was raised the next same day. day. The same day. Okay, give us that. The same day, yes. So um, on the morning of um, February 23rd, 1945, there was a patrol of Marines from E-228 who mounted, um, they climbed to the summit of Mount Suribachi, and around 10.30 in the morning, they raised the um, American flag on the summit. This was a momentous event. It was a huge morale booster for the men on the ground. It was visible from throughout the island. Um, and that is the moment that is recorded in diaries, letters home. Um, a few hours later, the command went up, um, the order went up to replace that flag with a larger one so that it would be more visible throughout the rest of the campaign. This was only a few days into the battle. It would go on for several more weeks. Right. Uh, and so when that second flag went up, there was an AP photographer by the name of Joe Rosenthal there who took the photograph that we all know today, and that is the event that we think of when we, and that is immortalized in this culture. Now, is this, is the statue a re uh, sort of immortalizing the photograph or the first flag raising? Uh, so this, the sculpture, it was created by a sculptor by the name of Felix de Weldon. Uh, he was working for the Navy during the war and he was inspired by Joe Rosenthal's photograph. He saw it within three days. He had created a model of that, of the um, photographic depiction. Uh, he then that w circulated among members of Congress who began calling for a monument to be made. Uh, over the next nine years, uh, there were donations from m Marines, uh, friends of the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Navy, um, completely funded with donations to um, create this. It was dedicated in 1954. If you look on, on the monument, uncommon valor was a common virtue. And that, mm -hmm. that was true for the men who were depicted and then all the other men who sort of there was controversy surrounding which one which one was actually in each each event but it it brings up the larger issue of the marines in general and in every couple of decades or so you hear rumblings that there that the marine leadership is worried about the marine corps either sort of being absorbed into the army or absorbed into the navy give us your give us your sense now as a historian is that are, are we in one of those cycles now or is that is the the valor and the answering the bell during the war on terror kind of stopped that talk. Um, absolutely. I think the Marines play a vital role in our counterinsurgency efforts. Um, we're in a, a period in, of immense challenges with counterterrorism, with low intensity conflict. Um, but these are skills the, um, the Marine Corps, since its founding in 1775, has. I just want to introduce you, interrupt you. We see some video. And this is video both from Iraq and then also uh, as Marines were in Iraq, but also there's right now Marines in Syria. This is Afghanistan. The only uh, American military force that is fighting ISIS on the ground, not in really an advisor capacity, are the Marines launching, launching artillery uh, against ISIS. Are, what makes them in their mind unique and what sort of historically as you've compared them to the other services make them unique? So the Marines are our first expeditionary force. Uh, this has its roots in Iwo Jima um, and really the decades before. It was in the 1920s and 1930s that the um, leadership at, in the Marine Corps began carrying out study, studies for amphibious assault. Um, the Marines' origins are as, as a maritime force with the U.S. Navy. Uh, and they were able at that time to 
anticipate the major battles in the Pacific in World War II, and this allowed them then during World War II at Guadalcanal, at Iwo Jima, to have successful landings. They were never defeated in a major landing, amphibious no. landing campaign and, and at that time. Of, and, and, then, and then, but there, to your point, uh, and as our Brian Kilmeade immortalized in his book, and memorialized in his book, that it goes all the way back to Jefferson's time and to mm -hmm. taking on pirates uh, in, right. nor in North Africa. Uh, Brian, really appreciate you being here. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your you. insights. In